Yashar, Jasher, 11. And Nimrod, son of Cush, was still in the land of Shinar. And he reigned over it and dwelt there. And he built cities in the land of Shinar. And these are the names of the four cities which he built. And he called their names after the occurrences that happened to them in the building of the tower. And he called the first Babel, saying, Because Yahuwah there confounded the language of the whole earth. And the name of the second he called Erech, because from there Elohim dispersed them. And the third he called Achad, saying, There was a great battle at that place. And the fourth he called Kalna, because his princes and mighty men were consumed there, and they vexed Yahuwah. They rebelled and transgressed against him. And when Nimrod had built these cities in the land of Shinar, he placed in them the remainder of his people, his princes and his mighty men that were left in his kingdom. And Nimrod dwelt in Babel, and he there renewed his reign over the rest of his subjects. And he reigned securely, and the subjects and princes of Nimrod called his name Amraphel, saying that at the tower his princes and men fell through his means. And notwithstanding this, Nimrod did not return to Yahuwah, and he continued in wickedness and teaching wickedness to the sons of men. And Mardan, his son, was worse than his father and continued to add to the abominations of his father. And he caused the sons of men to sin. Therefore it is said, From the wicked goes forth wickedness. At that time there was war between the families of the children of Ham, as they were dwelling in the cities which they had built. And Kedola Ormer, king of Elam, went away from the families of the children of Ham, and he fought with them, and he subdued them. And he went to the five cities of the plain, and he fought against them, and he subdued them, and they were under his control. And they served him twelve years, and they gave him a yearly tax. At that time died Nehor, son of Serug, in the forty-ninth year of the life of Avram, son of Terach, and in the fiftieth year of the life of Avram, son of Terach, Avram came forth from the house of Noach and went to his father's house. And Avram knew Yahuwah, and he went in his ways and instructions, and Yahuwah, Eloheu, was with him. And Terach, his father, was in those days still captain of the host of King Nimrod, and he still followed strange Elohim. 
And Avram came to his father's house and saw twelve Elohim standing there in their temples. And the anger of Avram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Avram said, As Yahuwah lives, these images shall not remain in my father's house. So shall Yahuwah, who created me, do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And Avram went from them, and his anger burned within him. And Avram hastened and went from the chamber to his father's outer court. And he found his father sitting in the court, and all his servants with him. And Avram came and sat before him. And Avram asked his father, saying, Father, tell me, where is Elohim, who created heaven and earth, and all the sons of men upon earth? And who created you and me? And Tarak answered his son Avram and said, Behold, those who created us are all with, with us in the house. And Avram said to his father, My lord, show them to me, I pray you. And Tarach brought Avram into the chamber of the inner court, and Avram saw, and behold, the whole room was full of Elohim, of wood and stone, twelve great images and others less than they, without number. And Tarach said to his son, Behold, these are they which made all you see upon earth, and which created me and you and all mankind. And Tarach bowed down to his Elohim, and he then went away from them, and Avram, his son, went away with him. And when Avram had gone from them, he went to his mother and sat before her. And he said to his mother, Behold, my father has shown me those who made heaven and earth and all the sons of men. Now, therefore, hasten and fetch a kid from the flock and make of it savory meat that I may bring it to my father's Elohim as an offering for them to eat. Perhaps I may thereby become acceptable to them. And his mother did so, and she fetched a kid and made savory meat thereof and brought it to Avram. And Avram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's Elohim. And he drew nigh to them that they might eat. And Tarak, his father, did not know of it. And Avram saw on the day when he was sitting amongst them that they had no voice, no hearing, no motion, and not one of them could stretch forth his hand to eat. And Avram mocked them and said, Surely the savory meat that I prepared has not pleased them, or perhaps it was too little for them, and for that reason they would not eat. Therefore, Tomorrow I will prepare 
fresh, savory meat, better and more plentiful than this, in order that I may see the result. And it was on the next day that Avram directed his mother concerning the savory meat. And his mother rose and fetched three fine kids from the flock. And she made of them some excellent savory meat, such as her son was fond of. And she gave it to her son Avram. And Tarach, his father, did not know of it. And Avram took the savory meat from his mother and brought it before his father's Elohim into the chamber. And he came nigh unto them that they might eat. And he placed it before them. And Avram sat before them all day thinking perhaps they might eat. And Avram viewed them, and behold, they had neither voice nor hearing, nor did one of them stretch forth his hand to the meat to eat. And in the evening of that day in that house, Avram was clothed with the Ruach Elohim. And he called out and said, Woe unto my father and this wicked generation, whose hearts are all inclined to vanity, who serve these idols of wood and stone, which can neither eat, smell, hear, nor speak, who have mouths without speech, eyes without sight, ears without hearing, hands without feeling, and legs which cannot move. Like them are those that made them and that trust in them. And when Avram saw all these things, his anger was kindled against his father, and he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand, and came unto the chamber of the Elohim, and he broke all his father's Elohim. And when he had done breaking the images, he placed the hatchet in the hand of the great Elohim, which was there before them, and he went out. And Tarach, his father, came home, for he had heard at the door the sound of the striking of the hatchet. So Tarach came into the house to know what this was about. And Tarach, having heard the noise of the hatchet in the room of images, ran to the room to the images, and he met Avram going out. And Tarach entered the room and found all the idols fallen down and broken, and the hatchet in the hand of the largest, which was not broken, and the savory meat which Avram, his son, had made was still before them. And when Tarach saw this, his anger was greatly kindled, and he hastened and went from the room to Avram. And he found Avram, his son, still sitting in the house, and he said to him, What is this work you have done to my Elohim? And Avram answered Tarach, his father, and, said, and he said, Not so, my lord, for I brought savory meat before them. And when I came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat, they all at once 
stretched forth their hands to eat before the great one had put forth his hand to eat. And the large one saw their works that they did before him, and his anger was violently kindled against them. And he went and took the hatchet that was in the house and came to them and broke them all. And behold, the hatchet is yet in his hand as you see. And Tarak's anger was kindled against his son Avram when he spoke this. And Tarak said to Avram, his son, in his anger, What is this tale that you have told? You speak lies to me. Is there in these Elohim's Ruach soul or power to do all you have told me? Are they not wood and stone, and have I not myself made them? And can you speak such lies, saying that the large Elohim that was with them smote them? It is you that did place the hatchet in his hands, and then say he smote them all. And Avram answered his father and said to him, And how can you then serve these idols in whom there is no power to do anything? Can those idols in which you trust deliver you? Can they hear your prayers when you call upon them? Can they deliver you from the hands of your enemies? Or will they fight your battles for you against your enemies? That you should serve wood and stone which can neither speak nor hear. And now, surely it is not good for you, nor for the sons of men that are connected with you to do these things. Are you so silly, so foolish, or so short of understanding that you will serve wood and stone? and do after this manner. And forget Yahuwah Elohim, who made heaven and earth, and who created you in the earth, and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood, did not our fathers in days of old sin in this matter? And Yahuwah, Elohim of the universe, brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth? And how can you continue to do this and serve Elohim of wood and stone, who cannot hear, or speak, or deliver you from oppression, thereby bringing down the anger of the Elohim of the universe upon you? Now, therefore, my father, refrain from this, and bring not evil upon your soul, and the souls of your household. And Avram hastened and sprang from before his father and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol, with which Avram broke it and ran away. And Terach, seeing all that Avram had done, hastened to go from his house, and he went to the king and he came before Nimrod and stood before him, and he bowed down to the king. And the king said, What do you want? And he said, I beseech you, my lord, to hear me. Now, fifty years back, a child was born to me, and thus has he done to my Elohim 
and thus has he spoken. And now, therefore, my Lord and King, send for him that he may come before you and judge him according to the law, that we may be delivered from his evil. And the king sent three men of his servants, and they went and brought Avram before the king. And Nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him, and Terach sat also before them. And the king said to Avram, What is this that you have done to your father and to his Elohim? And Avram answered the king in the words that he spoke to his father. And he said, The large Elohim that was with them in the house did to them what you have heard. And the king said to Avram, had they power to speak and eat and do as you have said? And Avram answered the king, saying, And if there be no power in them, why do you serve them and cause the sons of men to err through your follies? Do you imagine that they can deliver you or do anything small or great? that you should serve them? And why will you not sense the Elohim of the whole universe who created you and in whose power it is to kill and keep alive? O oh, foolish, simple, and ignorant king, Woe unto you forever. I thought you would teach your servants the upright way, but you have not done this, but have filled the whole earth with your sins and the sins of your people who have followed your ways. Do you not know or have you not heard? that this evil which you do, our ancestors sinned therein in days of old, and the eternal Elohim brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed them all, and also destroyed the whole earth on their account, and will you and your people rise up now and do like unto this work in order to bring down the anger of Yahuwah Elohim of the universe and to bring evil upon you and the whole earth? Now, therefore, put away this evil deed which you do and serve the Elohim of the universe as your soul is in his hands, and then it will be well with you. And if your wicked heart will not hearken to my words to cause you to forsake your evil ways and to serve the eternal Elohim, then will you die in shame in the latter days, you, your people, and all who are connected with you. Hearing your words or walking in your evil ways. And when Avram had ceased speaking before the king and princes, Avram lifted up his eyes to the heavens, and he said, Yahuwah sees all the wicked. 
and he will judge them.